So, I went to Cornell and for a lot of you that have been watching this channel, this isn't new news. But for all of those that are new to the channel, my name is Saloni. I went to Cornell for my master's in biomedical engineering. And it's been over five years that I've actually been working in the US in the healthcare industry. Now, when I was going through this entire college application process, and you know, that just makes me sound so old. Um, but we really didn't have these YouTube videos where um, educational channels would walk you through what you need to put in your application, how you need to write your essays, nothing. I basically kind of just winged it, did whatever I felt like, whatever I thought would bring value to my profile. And I feel like there were certain aspects that I did a good job. For example, I had like this really cool passion project in undergrad where I made like a, a hand tremor device. Um, so that was like really high profile. I had two hospital internships that were really uh, cool and I got a lot to learn from. And to top all of that off, I got the opportunity to do significant research at Harvard Medical School where I worked um, on uh, infectious diseases to detect corneal ulcer in uh, tear samples. Um, my research kind of like revolved around making um, a microfluidic device. It even got published. And I think all of these things kind of helped me reach Cornell and make my profile really strong. But I often think that if there was something that I could have done more or if there was someone who told me that, you know, maybe this is something that you could also explore, it can help you kind of get to a better school. I could have maybe gotten into Stanford, MIT, better colleges, you know, not, not saying that Cornell is bad or anything. It's definitely an Ivy League, but you know, you always want to aim for better, higher and, and so on. So I thought in this video, I would basically tell you those things that I feel would really help any student kind of stand out in their college application, whether you're applying to undergrad or you're applying for a graduate degree. There are just some things that are kind of left out and, and, and the reason behind it is really not known. So the first thing I want to start out with is to talk about community based involvements. And the best way to think about this, the first part of this is affiliation with your school. Now, I don't blame international schools, especially in India, teachers, principals, they really don't know much about this process. Because if you think about it, it's new to them. This isn't something that you know, they were, uh, they've studied or it's, it's typical, it's definitely something that is new to kind of hear students build on their extracurricular profile as opposed to schools in the US where you have like these math clubs, science debate clubs, music clubs. But you shouldn't use this as an excuse not to do anything eventually. Like you have to be the one to take initiative here. And that's something that I feel I did a good job with when I decided I wanted to kind of go to the US and get into a really good school. I didn't cry and crib about the opportunities that weren't available. Instead, I went out of my way to create these those opportunities for myself. And what I mean by that is, let's say that your school doesn't offer certain clubs or, or, or activities. All you have to do is go to your school principal, get a few teachers on board, um, start a club. You can maybe be a founder. All you need is a letter stating that, you know, you founded this club. It's starting as of this year. Um, you can get your friends together that are like-minded people that kind of are, have the same interest, assign different roles. One person can be in charge of uh, regulating meetings every week. One person can handle the social media. Another person can be in charge of maybe like electronics and robotics if it's a robotics club. And then have an agenda of what the club would do. Now, it's not that difficult if you think about it. The point of all of these clubs is that other than the school, other than the curriculum, other than studying for tests and just solely studying for these tests, you are doing something to better yourself and learn how to work in a team. And using things like I'm a gap year student and I have to study for the IIT or I have to study for NEET are just not good excuses for anything. Initiatives can be taken anywhere. You don't have to wait for someone to come and give it to you. And the second way of like kind of getting involved with your community is within your locality itself. And the best way to kind of think about this is in your society, 
think of something that needs to be fixed. It can maybe be the fact that there are too many dogs that bark in the night, or there's a park that's really dirty, um, or there's a sidewalk that is broken and that needs to be fixed. Maybe there's like a part uh, that's super dirty, it needs to be cleaned up, painted all over, made really nice. Do it. Um, I'm pretty sure you can find out who like the association is usually in a lot of societies, or you can find out um, who is in charge. Take permission, get a group of friends. If you guys need funds to like buy cleaning supplies or whatnot, figure out how to do that. Starting a club, being a part of like all of these communities and making a difference where you are is what colleges look for. And the reason why they're looking for all of this is because that shows them that if they were to admit you and you were to come on campus in their college, you would do similar activities to improve their campus, to move their you know clubs forward, to take initiative and be a proactive student when you're here in college. And yeah, so today's video is like completely in the car. We are going to Syracuse. I'm going to go meet my sister. It's been a really long time. Uh, sort of like a mini surprise, but uh, for those of you that don't know, she is an undergrad, third year undergrad in Syracuse University. So we are going to go say hi to her, have dinner, head back. And of course, I cannot meet my sister without getting her something, a small present. So I got her the Dossier perfume. Now these, you guys have seen this on the channel a lot, but the one that I got for her this time is the Woody Chestnut. Now these come in super affordable, like travel size packaging, easy to use. They have like this magnetic cap that kind of just like snaps on so you don't forget it. And honestly, like these are great for guys and girls. I'm, I'm gonna leave a link to these perfumes in the description below. So definitely check out and use my code for a special discount. So the second thing that I wanna talk about is research. Now this topic has been getting a ton of attention lately. And there's like a very funny saying, I've used it so many times that, you know, if you, if you don't have research that has cured cancer, you probably can't get into MIT. It's probably not worth it. But if you kind of like think about it, it's, it's sort of true what they're saying. And the point of doing research is to show that you are able to perform academically to the highest quality in a structured and organized environment that has been vouched for and used by scientists all over the world. And that is the point of, you know, immersing yourself in such an experience. Now, a lot of students kind of take research into like a whole other wrong direction where they pay to get their papers published. They even go to the extent of paying for projects, which is insane. Like, I don't understand the benefit of this. Um, they use ChatGPT, which is an elephant in the room altogether. And the reason I say that is a lot of colleges have now just openly said that they have um, plagiarism pro policies. And if basically they detect the use of AI in your essays or whatever documents you're submitting as part of your college applications, that's it. You are basically almost rejected. It's as simple as that. There's no way to sugarcoat this. Um, but with all of that aside, there is a right way to do research. And that comes with so many benefits, which is trying to take a problem that is relevant in your society and in the community at a large scale and trying to solve that in a very academic and intellectual manner. It shows high amounts of aptitude skills. And just for an example, let's take a biological research project, for example. Um, let's talk about stem cells. So specifically, donor stem cells have a habit of dying really quickly. They have like poor engraftment rates. They're not biocompatible. Whenever you try to use them with something, they just basically die. And that has created a lot of problems because although they're there, we can't use them for a long time. So one of the teams that I recently worked with, they, they used and developed hydrogel methods to improve the efficiency of these stem cells. And 
this is, you know, it's very scientific again, but let's take maybe computer science as an example. I worked with another team that made a tool, an actual working prototype um, of a platform that would help women find affordable and safe housing. They used natural language processing to kind of build this tool that would take into account like multiple reviews from users and basically help like young professional single working women uh, make sure that they're more safe in the area that they're trying to maybe find like temporary housing or apartments in. And if, and if you kind of like closely look at both of these problems, they're ultimately doing the same thing. They're trying to solve a problem in society, very similar to, you know, you trying to clean up in your own neighborhood, fix a porch or clean up a park. It's essentially the same mindset. The point is you are solving a problem and that is what colleges are looking for. They, not every college wants you to cure cancer or they expect you to have like hundreds of research papers already published. They are looking for motive. They are looking for students that are eager to first identify that, yeah, this is a problem where I am in my surrounding and fix it. Take that effort and that step to do something about that. That attitude is what colleges look for in students. Again, in my opinion, uh, you know, what do I know? But with all of that said, the point of me, you know, telling you and giving you these examples is that there is a way to combine all of these like community based research projects. And that is through the research bootcamp uh, by Incognito Blueprints. That's actually uh, both of the examples that I gave you guys were from the research bootcamp of the past cohorts. So the registrations um, are open right now. The early bird pricing is on. So definitely take advantage of that. Even though I know that the bootcamp starts after the deadline of most regular um, decision colleges, uh, you can still indicate that you are doing this bootcamp and you can indicate what your research is. You will get your research before the colleges have deadlines anyway. So you can talk about, you know, this is the research that I've been doing and this is the research that I will be working on for the next few months. Another great place to kind of talk about this is most colleges, a lot of students don't understand when you submit your application, the process isn't done at this at that point. After you submit your application, there are additional documents that colleges ask for. There are letters of um, extended interest that you write as a student where you show colleges that, you know, here, uh, here are things that I'm still doing um, as a good student in the field that I want to, you know, study. So these research opportunities are a great way to showcase that you're not just sitting and waiting around. You're actually making good use of your time. So I'm going to leave a link to the research bootcamp in the description below. Definitely check it out. I recommend this to a lot of the high school students. Honestly, I wish that I had this opportunity when I was um, in college or in school or some guidance, you know, um, a YouTube channel, maybe just like mine uh, would have been really helpful. But then... I wouldn't have the opportunity to talk to all of you guys. Um, all right, so that's pretty much all that I have. If you guys are watching till this point, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.